Hi, everybody. I just wanted to bring to you a simplest way to actually approach learning antibiotics for NAPLEX. So in the NAPLEX and when we're preparing for the NAPLEX, things are different from the exams that we did at school. So for this approach, we need to bring all the information that we have or we've learned, all the aggregate information, and try to apply it you know, when having a patient case. So you, we need to switch from that mindset of just, under, you know, like learning the material and preparing for the exams to switching, you know, to applying that material for the board exams and for the patient. So, so when preparing for the NAPLEX, uh, especially under antibiotics, we need to start by understanding the bacterial organisms. The ones we've been given so far is not a lot of them, but the principles apply, ap applied when looking at the medications at treatment is a little bit straightforward, even though it's not straightforward. And then we need to know the classes of the organisms and then be able to identify the bags and then their corresponding medications and then with knowing that information, the board exams is more of elimination processes or sometimes it's choose all that applies. So, so knowing all of how the, what the organisms are, what, you know, the, the classes in which those bugs are like grouping them and then their medications to treat those bugs and then grouping those medications as well is going to be useful. And then we need to know the medication classes and the corresponding bugs and then understand and review the bacterial in infections in the different parts of the body. And then understand the treatments and how they apply the principles that apply for the treatments. And then know the side effects of the antibiotics. And then from there, just repeat, 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 rinse and repeat until you get it. <laughs> so bacterial classes that we have, it's just going to be mainly three, gram positive, which appear dark purple, and then the gram negative, which appear pink, and then um, atypicals, which do not stain or show any morphology. So we need to understand that. From there, we need to know what's contained or what's grouped under gram positives. So gram positive is the gram positive cocci, gram positive roads, and gram positive anaerobes. Anerob so for the gram positive cocci, we have the streptococcus, we have the enterococcus, and we, we have the staphylococcus as well. So how I remember the uh, gram-positive cocci is by knowing the um, SES. And then we have the um, <clears throat> gram-positive anaerobes, sorry, the gram-positive roads, which is the listeria, diphtheria, anthrax, clostridium species. My mnemonic is CLAD. And then we have the gram-positive anaerobes, which is the actinomyces, clostridium species, and peptostreptococcus as well. And then we come to the second class that we just looked at, the atypicals, which is chlamydia, legionella, mycoplasm that causes tuberculosis, and mycoplasm that causes pneumonia. Now, I want you to start keeping in mind of what's causing pneumonia because we're going to be seeing some repeat organisms of the bugs that are causing pneumonia. And then all once you already know what's in the gram positive, and then you already know what's in the atypicals, everything else falls in the gram negative bacteria. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the gram negative bacteria has the bacilli, then they have the anaerobes as well, and then they have the diplococci. <clears throat> Knowing this is going to be important because in the exam, they can say a patient comes in and they, they, take, you know, they go ahead and take a lab and then they find out it's a diplococci. So we need to know what is under the diplococci. Diplococci is Neisseria and Mozzarella catiralis. So for the Neisseria, Neisseria causes meningitis, and there's one that also causes gonorrhea. So to visualize this, I borrowed this image from, <clears throat> from the 
Rx prep. And on the Rx prep, we have the gram positive, a typicals, and gram negative. I'm a visual person, so having this in all the colors was just really so useful to me. So, so just take a look at this, and then you see the clusters, the uh, Staphylococcus causes clusters, and then the the, there's the pairs and chains, which is the streptococcus. And then we have the rhodes, which is the listeria and the anaerobes as well, which we just talked about. Repetition is important. So I'm just gonna repeat it. Atypicals, we have the chlamydia, legionella, mycoplasm, pneumonia, and mycobacterium, tuberculosis. And then everything else falls under gram negative. Even though we already know everything else falls under gram negative, we still need to know what falls under which sub, you know, subtype under the gram negative. So the cocci is this uh, Neisseria and Moxarella catiralis. And then we have roads, which some are found in the gut. And then the other, one, other ones that do not colonize the gut. So the ones that colonize the gut, just how I remember this is <clears throat> the gut ha is acidic or has different pH. That can be, that can influence the bacteria. So the bacteria here need, need to, you know, need to assimilate and protect themselves to stay longer. So you'll find that the Proteus mirabilis, um, the, they're they're more enteric coated, like they have a coating to protect themselves. And then we have the E. coli, Klebsiella, Serratia, Enterobacter, um, and Centrobacter uh, species as well. The ones that are not colonizing the gut are the Pseudomonas aeruginosa, the Haemophilus influenza, and Providentia species. And then we go to the Cocobacilli, the Cocobacilli, uh, the Moraxella Mor catiralis seems to be either under the uh, cocci or the uh, cocci bacilli. And then we have the Boretella pitosis that causes whooping cough. And then the Actinobacter baumani, which we need to know that's quite, it appears in a lot of quizzes and exams as well. And then we have the anaerobes, which is the bacteriodes for uh, fragilis and the Prevertella species. And then we have the carved and the spiral shaped gram negative, which we are familiar with this when we were doing travelers, um, uh, travel us chapter. So with knowing all of that, the next thing, how I organize this information in my mind is to understand the different types of infections. And so well, we need to familiarize ourselves with the different types of infections. So obviously there's the infective endocarditis, which is um, affecting the you know, the internal organs within the heart area. We have the cellulitis, which is a skin infection, post-surgery intra-abdominal infection. This is more in the, you know, the gastrointestinal area. But remember that this is post-surgery. So the skin has been open enough for the bacteria to get in. So this is going to be the bacteria that's on the surface that's, that's going to be incubating in those area. Diverticulitis, osteomyelitis, uh, UTIs and pyelonephritis. And then we have pneumonia, meningitis, sexually transmitted diseases, and acute ga gastroenteritis. So having visual diagrams is going to be important. And also this is um, from the Rx prep. So the common bacteria pathogens for selected sites of infection. So we have the from the top of our head, which it is, which is usually meningitis, we we get to see what are the types of bacteria that are causing meningitis. So, at the top is streptococci, which we looked up. We look we looked it up, which is under gram positive. Then we have most of this. Uh, the 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 next two, which is gram negative, and then the um, group B streptococci and E. coli, which is gram negative, and then listeria, which is an anaerobe, gram positive anaerobe. And then the mouth flora is made up of mostly the gram positive anaerobes and, and gram positive, which is streptococci viridian group. The upper respiratory system is streptococcus 
uh, pyogenes, streptococcus pneumonia, hemophilus influenza, and moraxella catarralis. So there's a mixture of gram positive and gram negative. So we just need to know what dwells where. And then we have the heart or endocarditis, staphylococcus aureus, including the MRSA, staphylococcus, epi, epi, staphylococcus epidamidis, streptococci and uh, enterococci. This is mostly gram positive in the heart area. So mostly how they get into the heart is possibly through surgery because these are, um, you know, skin, skin dwelling bacteria. The soft or skin tissue is made up of Staphylococcus aureus, uh, Streptococcus pyogenes, Staphylococcus epidamides, and anaerobes. That is on the soft, you know, this, the skin. Then we have the bones and joints. We have the stuff, which is gram positive, Streptococci, uh, Neisseria gonorrhea, and GNRs. Now, see. Neisseria gonorrhea. Gonorrhea is a um, sexually transmitted infection or it affects the sexual organs. So the bones and the joints that we're talking about are the ones that are below the sexual organ. So there could be a potential for this bacteria traveling all the way to the bone. So, you know, we can connect that that way. And then we have the UTI or urinary tract infections, which is caused by the E. coli, proteus, Klebsiella. The E. coli, proteus, and Klebsiella, we looked at those at the enteric coated that are affecting the, um, the gut system. We also need to keep in mind that they're enteric coated because they are protecting themselves from the environment, which is mostly either acidic, okay? And then we have the staphylococci, the streptococci, and enterococci, which is gram positive as well. We have the lower respiratory system, mostly ones that are acquired at the hospital, staphylococcus aureus, including massa, the pseudomonas aeruginosa, enterocorded GNR, and the streptococcus pneumonia. And then the lower respiratory um, diseases, which is mostly acquired in the community. <clears throat> We have the streptococcus pneumonia, hemophilus influenza, atypical legionella, mycoplasm, and enteric corded GNR. So having all of this in mind, let's dive a little bit into the different types of gram positives and also just having a little bit of a sneak peek on what type of medications cover them. The reason why I'm doing it this way is to create that culture of repetition. So the streptococcus, streptococcus, it, you know, we, we've seen it's mostly affecting the, it, it could be strep pneumonia that's affecting the areas above the diaphragm, which is the ears, otitis media, uh, sinusitis, the part within the nose. Remember the otitis media is connected to the sinuses. And then we have pneumonia that's on the, you know, in the chest and lungs. And then we have meningitis, which is in the brain above the diaphragm, right? And then we have this trap viridian, which is a normal flora. However, it's affecting the mucus linings in the mouth. And where else do we find the mucus lining? In the digestive system. So that is causing endocarditis mainly. Then we have the staphylococcus aureus, which, which is classified into M MSSA and MRSA. What are some of the type of types of medications that are treating the MSSA, which is the methicillin sensitive um, streptococcus aureus. We have the, the penicillin, the anti-staphylococcal penicillin, which is um, nafcillin, which is an injection used in the hospital. And then if we, if we need to discharge the patient and send them home, we can use the diclo diclozacillin, which is capsule. And then we also have the oxacillin, which is an injection. We also have the MRSA, which is treated by vancomycin. And if the MRSA is not sensitive to the vancomycin, then we look for the linezolid, which is Zyvox, then daptomycin, unison, 
and ceftriolin, which is um, cephalosporin. And then types of infections that are um, that are mostly caused by the Staphylococcus aureus bag. We have the endocarditis, osteomyelitis, which is the bones, and then we have the toxic shock syndrome. We also have the impetiger, which is a honey crust colored skin infection. We can use an ointment, the mupiracin, uh, and the MRSA colonization in the nostrils. We can, you know, we can use the Bactroban nasal single use tube for the treatment. Now, now let us look at the enterococci, which is broken down into E. officialis and E. fissium. This is also normal flora. However, it's mostly causing infection when someone is in the hospital, which is also known as the nosocomial settings. And it, it can be vancomycin resistant enterococcus. So we have to know their susceptibility. So what are top, the types of infection caused by the enterococci? We have the UTI, indwelling catheter um, patients, sepsis and endocarditis. So breaking them down, according to the Rx prep, we have the E. facialis that can be treated with penicillin G or ampicillin. That's within the um, penicillin class. Then we also have linazolate, Zyvox, and daptomycin. E. facium can also be treated with daptomycin and linazolate. However, E. facialis and facium can cause cystitis. And how to treat uh, cystitis is we only use nitrofurantoin, phosphomycin, and doxycycline for both when it's the facialis or facium. I think I'm gonna have that for now. In the next coming videos, I'll be tackling the part two, which is going to be similar review, but then on gram negative. And then we also, the next video after that, I'm, I'll be reviewing, um, the different types of medications that we have. And then once we look at this, we're going to apply the principles learned in reviewing the treatment of the various infections that we've talked about. Until then, you all have a wonderful time. Thank you and good luck.